If you are sad and depressed and have an autoimmune disease, then you need to watch this video. If you don't know this one thing about depression, it's literally impossible to fix it. And I can guarantee, you know, your psychiatrist or whoever is not telling you about this. My name's Mike the Healer Gut Guy. I used to have really bad Crohn's and colitis. And I remember when just the sadness and depression was so intense. It was on like my 22nd birthday. I was just got diagnosed with Crohn's and colitis about a year or two ago. And so I just went down the rabbit hole of like holistic things. I was going on this diet and I was super strict. I didn't go out to eat. I didn't go out with my friends. I was taking probiotics, doing cold exposure. Like I literally did everything. I spent every last penny on like holistic remedies and buying drugs and all that stuff. And then my birthday rolled around and I said, you know what, I deserve a treat. And I had one piece of cake and I had the worst flare of my life. And when I was sitting in bed and I was puking my brains out, pooping my brains out with the worst gut pain imaginable, I just was hopeless and depressed because I had literally tried everything everything and I couldn't have a piece of cake on my birthday. Now that sadness and depression did not lift until I saw a ray of hope that I believed would fix my gut issues. So today I eat whatever I want and I don't get symptoms. I weigh 200 pounds. I used to weigh 150 pounds and I looked like a complete skeleton. I rarely, if ever, get any gut pain. I live a normal life, and it's all because I addressed what I believe to be the root cause of the problem, which was a stressful event that put my gut into overdrive, and there's actually a ton of science to back this up. So in order to understand your depression and how to fix it, you first need to understand what an emotion is and what its biological purpose is. So if you look at the etymology of emotion, it stems from like a French word to move and to stir. It's to move us happy, good emotions, pot, or better to say positive emotions, they bring us closer to things that improve our survival. Oh, I'm happy I got my glasses so I can see again. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, somebody took my glasses. Where are they? I'm so mad at them. Oh, I'm stuck in the middle of the jungle and somebody broke my glasses. I'm sad and depressed because I can't see anything and there's not a glasses store around for thousands of miles. Oh no, and no one's gonna, there's no one here to help me to get home. So negative emotions are there to help us deal with something that we think is threatening our survival. I felt depressed because I had tried everything, almost everything. There was one thing I hadn't tried. I tried almost, or I at least at the time believed I tried everything. I was completely hopeless for a solution to my Crohn's and colitis. My doctors were telling me it was incurable. And then, you know, I went to the natural paths. They were telling me they were, they were, I needed to be on a boring, bland diet for the rest of my life. And I honestly did not have the willpower to do it. It was sucking up all my money. Uh, I was not performing well at work. The, I had so many negative things going on in my life, like my brain couldn't process it. Like think about like your computer, your phone, like it can only process so much information at once. And I had so much negative information running through my head. It's just like, hey, we're gonna give you the depression emotion and you're gonna lay low, and you're just gonna lay low until it passes over. Like, that's the biological purpose of depression. To have us sit still and lay low until the bad situation flies by, or someone comes and helps us. That's the biological purpose of depression. It may not be pleasant, definitely not pleasant, but it's, it's not something to, it, you shouldn't be afraid of your emotions. 
It's better to be aware of your emotions and then try to find the thing that is making you depressed. Like, what's the problem in your life that's making you depressed? Because your ought, like for your autoimmune disease, a stressful event happened to trigger that autoimmune disease. That, that's my belief. And there's a ton of science to back that up. I go over it in a ton more detail in my free webinar. Um, but then you go and you get diagnosed by your doctor and they stress you out because they don't have a, a good solution. And now you have another conflict that can make you sad, depressed, angry. And most, a lot of people get depressed when they get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, especially if they have bad symptoms because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you look it up, you read the de definition of any autoimmune disease, and it's a very depressing description until you learn the true nature of your body, which I believe to be described best in uh, Dr. Homer's German New Medicine. You might also hear it referred to as uh, German Germanic healing knowledge. And it just simply states that a stressful event put an organ into overdrive. And at some point, that organ kind of starts to fall apart, and that's when we get symptoms. It becomes too much of a burden on that organ, and we start to get symptoms. So the way that we get better and the way that we reduce our symptoms is we find the conflict, which your conscious mind is probably suppressing, and we slowly start to come to peace with it. Well, preferably quickly. Well, it, it, it depends on the situation. So, but at the very, like right there, when you learn that it, it's not, in, like the, it's so stupid to call something incurable because the word cure means to take care of. So you're telling me you can't take care of it? Makes no sense. When you start to see a ray of hope when you, and, and believe it, that's when the depression can start to lift. But you might, you might be depressed about, you know, there's no cure for your autoimmune disease. And then he also might be depressed, you know, that your boyfriend or your girlfriend doesn't want you back. How do we deal with that? Oh, you get your boyfriend back. Okay, what if that's not an option? Get another one. Like, or become okay with being single. We have to become better conflict solvers because it's these, these conflicts that are putting our organs in and out of overdrive, especially if you're somebody with a lot of autoimmune disease and your emotions are flying all over the place. Conflicts. Like, these emotions just don't come out of nowhere. They're not bad. You're not broken. Um, you just have, you're, you're, you have these beliefs inside of you that make your life look really bad when in reality you live in probably the safest most prosperous era that humans have ever been in like imagine being born 100 years ago 200 300 years ago you could be living on the frontier of america out west and then some indian comes up out of nowhere and scalps your your mom and your dad right in front of you you don't have to deal with that stuff and if, you know, you weren't being killed by Indians, you know, you had, you had to get your own food. So, look, I go into much more detail about this in my free webinar. Uh, this is a lot of new information to digest, but, um, you know, a lot of people get scared about the feeling depressed, it's okay to be depressed, but if you want to fix this depression, and you might have a hard time, because the depression is like this big rock on you, but you have to get this rock off of you, you need to find the conflict that's weighing you down. It's the only way to lift a depression.